Potomology. If you don't know what potomology is, you can simply break down the word and figure it out. Like biology, study of life, bio. Potology, the study of pot. Not really. And it's not the study of pot or pots at all. It is actually the study of rivers. So I welcome you fellow Toastmasters and guests to tell you that you are all potomologists. See, when you study a river, you gotta view a river as your life or career. The river starts like you do, at the beginning at a source. And you go slowly down the way. And you gotta control that river as your career. You can only take care of good stuff, throw it in, and also your career grabs stuff like a river does. It'll grab sediments, a rock, and the more it grabs, the more good stuff that goes in it, the better it becomes. And oftentimes, when a river comes to a dam, it's a blockage. Now that dam can be bad, it can be good. Some dams cause swamps. This is when you have thrown too much bad stuff into your river. This bad stuff can be distractions. It can be anything that you choose not to do. Procrastination can be that. And sometimes it can be people. Because people sometimes should only be in your life for a season. And they shouldn't be dragged all the way from the source of your river to where it finally crests out the ocean. Now, rivers often have a confluence. A confluence is where two, three, four more rivers come together. That can be your college. It can be your work environment. Right now, we are in a confluence of ideas. Every, all these rivers that you are here have come together into this dam known as Toastmasters. And if you still don't believe me, I know everybody in here has said on one Sunday night, tomorrow, I gotta go to that damn place. <laughs> And one of the most prominent polymologists that I know is my father. My father had a source. He started off in Lewisburg, North Carolina. He had his first job at the age of eight in his house because he came from a household where you had to work. So every day when my grandmother came from the people's house that she was cleaning, she would walk down the hill and they would see her. And they had to break the yard and have it clean before she got there. Yard had no rats. It was all dirt. So she expected to see dirt lines in the yard when she came through, raked up and even, like those meditation gardens you see, those Asian meditation gardens back in the 60s. So she had lines in her yard. And he took his second job as cleaning glasses in the house. And he offered and negotiated $8 a week to do that from my grandmother. That carried him on to college. Done that eight dollars to washing dishes at Stuckey's in Durham as he went to St. Aug University. Working, working, working. Then he went from that to laundry, working, 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 washing cars, working, working, working. The whole time he's controlling his river, he's making sure it is strong, it is stable. He's working and going to school the whole time. And then he winds up graduating and getting married. It's confluence of my dad and my mother. And it was a one winter, 1985, Governor Jim Hunt was in office at that time. And my father was out of work. Right now he has come to a stoppage, but he continued to put forth the effort to find a job. Back then, it's not as easy as now to find a job. This is when you could send an email for a job now. Then you had to mail it off. You had to put a stamp that costs 25, 15 cents at least. If you sent a big package, it could be a dollar to somebody. You had to drive to an interview and then fill out a paper application. So you're losing money every day trying to find a job. As opposed to that, we can just post it up and go with that. And he had a wife and kids that he needed to take care of. And unemployment is going to run out. So he had to figure out what he's going to do. This river had filled up enough. When he said, I'm going to kick this damn down, he drove to Governor Jim Hunt's office in Raleigh, North Carolina. He went to the door, <laughs> knocked on the door. Of course, it's not the governor's office. It's the office of the governor's office. And the secretary answered. He comes to the door, says, sir, how can I help you? I need a job. My dad is dressed 
with a suit on that was too tight, <laughs> collar flailed out, because he never liked like wearing a tie, but he knew he had to wear one, collar bent up, class ring on, tight pants, tight shoes, I need a job, and I need it now. I'm talking to the governor. You're not talking to the governor. Yes, I am. I'm going to need to talk to him right now, because I need a job. I got a wife, and I got kids, and I need to take care of them. He said, no. He said, well, I'm not leaving until I get one. He's like, all right, fine. Because my dad is built much like me. He's a bigger guy. And that secretary that day, he was a little bit smaller guy. So he was kind of bearing over his desk a little, saying, I need a job and I need it now. So they looked up in the database, found the jobs. These are your two jobs. You can work for the IRS or you can work in probation. IRS involves travel. You won't be at home that much. This, it pays a little bit more, but you don't know where you're going to be stationed. We'll move you around the county. He felt that taking that path, taking that fork in the river, going down that way would take him away from his family. So he figured, no, I can't do that. Where's the probation at? Probation turns out was 15 miles away from home. He took it. He didn't enjoy it at first. First day on the job, he shows up. Guy comes in. He is carrying illegal substances. And the first thing they do in the office is pat you down. My dad says to him, well, I'm going to pat you down. He says, OK, give me a minute. This man runs <laughs> out of the office, books down the hallway, knocks everything down. They catch the guy, they pat him down eventually. And he says, this is my river I've chosen. And he enjoyed it ever since that day, the next day. So he has spent, as of last week, 30 years in that position and loved every day of it. And he says that no matter where you are or whatever river it goes to and whatever dam you behind, enjoy that damn place. Thank you. <laughs>